Hello and welcome, my name is Stefano and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up an L2TP VPN server on your Amata equipment at home. And in order to do this, there are some software requirements. The first of which is that you must have an Amata controller software version of 5.0.3. You must have an OC controller, the Amata hardware controller version of 1.14.3. And finally, the most important, or one of the most important anyway, uh, your router, in my case I have an ER605, it has to be updated to 1.2.3 uh, on its firmware. So those are the important ones. Obviously if you have different uh, a different setup, you will want to have the latest software, at least at the time of filming, which just came out not too long ago of this year, so January of this year. So important to grab those latest updates in order for all this to work. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and set up our L2TP server. One thing I want to show you before we set up is actually how my network is configured and this is the gateway my ISP provides AT&T and behind this gateway here is all of my Omada equipment. So we have the OC200 there, my switch, the ER605 router and of course the Unraid server that we want to be able to reach from our VPN remotely. Go ahead and log into your Omada controller and once you're there, you should be presented with a dashboard page. We're gonna to wanna to go all the way down to the gear icon here, click on the settings. Then we're gonna to go to VPN. We're gonna create a new VPN policy. In this case, uh, we're gonna name it TP-Link um, L2TP. You can name it whatever you want, of course. We're going to do a client to site VPN, so remote to um, local. We're going to set it obviously to be a VPN server L2TP. We want to be enabled. We're going to do encryption end to end, of course. And we are we could allow it to be on all VLANs if we had if we wanted to, but in this case I want it to be on a particular VLAN or have access to a particular VLAN, and that's going to be servers. And we're going to give it a uh, pre-shared key, something simple one. Uh, which is test one, two, three, four. Please do not do this at home. Use something slightly more complex. Uh, obviously, we want all that traffic to come through our WAN port. If you had multiple WAN ports, you would select uh, whichever WAN port you had available. Um, for IP pool, so this is something new that they've added. We can now assign it to an existing VLAN, and our existing VLAN for servers is 192.168.10.1. Slash 24. So we don't have to set up any routes. We don't have to do any uh, profiles or play with the access control list or anything like that. We can simply do this. And now anyone who has access to this the VPN or has a cr account created can access that server VLAN, which is really cool. So we hit create. All right, do to do is done. Now let's go over to VPN server. So we're gonna need a user. I'm sorry, VPN user, not VPN server. We're gonna go to VPN user and create a new user. In this case, I'm gonna call it SPX Labs. And my password is gonna be test12345. The VPN server is of course gonna be the one that we just created and named TP-Link L2TP. Uh, we're gonna leave it set to client mode. We are not gonna to touch the network extension mode. The maximum number of connections, we're gonna leave it at the default of three. You could change this to one, five, 10, whatever you'd like uh, for the max number of simultaneous connections. I'm gonna hit create. And we are pretty much done on the software side. The last thing that I need to do is also port forwarding. And the only reason why I need to do this is because as I mentioned earlier, I have my ER605, which sits behind my gateway, which is also acting as a router. So that's why I needed to port forward or else I'll have issues connecting to the um, L2TP server. So if you look over here, I have forwarded UDP ports, 500, 1701, and 4500 to the IP address of my ER605 router. So this is my router's, my Amada router RP, IP address. Man, I can't speak. And uh, this is pretty important that you figure out how to do on your own equipment at home or else you may have connectivity issues here. And these three ports are in fact important uh, if you plan to use the L2TP connection. All right, moving on. Now, really would have liked to show you guys how to do this on Windows because I believe Windows is more um, universally used. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot do that because there seems to be some sort of bug in the latest Windows 10 update. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this in Pop! OS because 
one, it works, and also it works really well. So let's take a look at Pop! OS so we can get an idea of what to do. Pop! OS doesn't natively support L2TP, so we actually have to install a package first in order to make this happen. The command to do this is sudo apt install network dash manager L2TP gnome. So if we mash enter on that and we enter in our super secret password, um, since I already have this installed, it completes immediately. But for you at home, it will ask you, are you sure you want to install this? You simply say yes, and it'll go through the install process and you are done. Um, now that we have that installed, uh, before we take a look at setting up L2TP real quick, let's just take a look at what my IP address is. I'm currently connected to my cell phone's um, hotspot. What is my IP? And we can see that I am on some random IP address given to me by my carrier. Um, the VLAN that we are trying to access, as mentioned earlier, is 10.1. And as this, this page kind of loads, but it's not actually loading. This is just cached information. I won't actually be able to reach anything here, as you will see. I can even do this again on uh, one. See, I get similar results here. Um, but this is never going to work because I'm obviously not on that network. Now let's go ahead and switch or create a L2TP uh, VPN. So if we go here and we go to uh, Wi-Fi settings, we click on network. Here under the section for VPN, we're going to hit the plus symbol. And then we can see that we now have a layer two tunneling protocol available to us. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna call it uh, SPX Labs Home. The name doesn't actually matter. Now for a gateway, you would enter in your domain name. So let's say it was um, for you, spxlabs.com. For me, it is spxlabs.com. Um, this could literally be anything, or you can enter in your WAN IP address. In my case, my uh, WAN IP address is 69.42.0.01. .0 .337, and then our username is SPX Labs. The password, or before we can enter the password, you have to click on this uh, question mark here and say, hey, just store it only for this user, and then enter in our secret password. Test one, two, three, four, five. We don't need to touch NT domain. We do need to go into IP uh, options. We need to enable IPsec tunnel. This part is very important. And then we are going to enter in our pre-shared key, which is test one, two, three, four. We're going to click OK. And finally click on add. Great, now that we added, all we have to do now is enable this connection. And in the top right corner, we will see a key icon with three dots and it should um, highlight or fill in this color signifying that it is now connected. Um, if I were to show you my new IP address, I assure you it would have changed, but I'm not going to do that because I trust this is working. And now if we try to go to um, our server, which is uh, 192.168.10.5, aha, we can finally reach our uh, Unraid server that is on that server's subnet. So that is basically how you set all this up and how it works. Cool, so that is how you do that on Pop! OS. Um, I have also tested this natively on iOS as well, and it works almost the same and just as well. Um, I haven't tested on Mac OS, I'm sure it would work. Not sure why I was having trouble with Windows 10. I was getting some strange error about PPP settings, uh, the triple P threat, as they say. Um, that error has existed for basically ever. And uh, I don't know how to get around it. I tried a bunch of troubleshooting things, but wasn't able to and found something about some sort of bug that may or may not exist on my uh, version of Windows 10. That may not be a problem for you, but there are ways or people out there who have created tutorials on how to set up an L2TP using Windows um, as their operating system. And so with all of that being said, I wanna thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Cheers.